because in a war there's always collateral damage. You're never going to uh, just kill the people that are the bad guys, so to speak. There's always civilian casualties, and since these people are very much uh, inside the civilian population in Iraq, there's, there's a huge amount of, of collateral damage, there's a huge amount of civilian deaths, and there's a lot of destruction uh, economically as well to what is a, probably a, a fragile After this, there'll be a huge amount of, then there are, I'm sure there is a, a horrible amount of financial hardship for people living there, not having power, not having water, uh, a lot more disease because of that, and not having enough food, a lot more disease because of that. You say after this, but the fact is, we're to some degree still at war, and the fact is we are occupying Iraq. Mm -hmm. So we are there, we have a presence there, and it doesn't look like we're going to leave anytime soon. Right. Which creates, goes back to a point, you made an article where you said war is socialism. Right. We now have a huge social program to <laughs> prop up another country. Right. And that is, is, is very much, you know, it's like uh, we're kind of given them a welfare democracy. Okay, it's like a new kind of welfare program. We're going to have a welfare program to feed the poor or bring money to poor neighborhoods. Now we're going to bring money to a democracy to other countries, I guess, where there is a great need for democracy, which goes back to something Karl Marx said, that each according to their need. This is how, this is what should determine what people get is how much they need it. Okay, and I guess that we have decided, following Karl Marx's advice, that Iraq needs democracy more so than any other country on the earth, and we are going to give it to them kind of as a big welfare check. And as we have found with, as we found with welfare, that it hasn't eliminated poverty. There are many people that argue, argue that it is making poverty worse in a lot of ways. And... It's, it can creates its own problems. We find that this is again creating lots of problems in Iraq. I mean, give them democracy. Do they want it? Do they need it? Is their culture going to accept it? Is their mindset going to accept it? And who are they going to vote in? We gave democracy in a sense to Palestine over I believe 30, 30 years. We gave them billions and billions of dollars in aid and asked for certain things because of that aid and eventually this, uh, these concessions on their part to get the financial aid from us led to a democracy in Palestine. What happened with that democracy? We elected an international terrorist organization that has pledged the destruction of the United States and Israel. Another, another great job by our American foreign policy. Right. Let me ask you this. Let's kind of bring this all together. What is the Libertarian Party's stance ultimately on war? Well, I've gone into a lot of very difficult to understand big philosophical ideas. And that is, uh, it makes for an interesting show, perhaps, I hope. Maybe to offend some people, maybe it enlightens others. Um, but practically what it means is that we should get our troops out of Iraq as quickly as possible without leaving them vulnerable to attack or to having more casualties or have them attacked as they are retreating. We should pack up, get all of our personnel, our people, our advisors, everyone out of the country, uh, all of the military armaments that we have in the country that it would be too expensive to bring back home. They should be destroyed or they should perhaps be sold to a friendly, friendly country, but basically we need to get out and we need to get out now. I'm not saying cut and run. I'm saying what we should do is basically admit that we've made a mistake and just get out, you know, declare victory and move on. Very, very briefly, a libertarian foreign policy would be what in one sentence? It would be to avoid entangling alliances with other countries and to our military should be only in case of defense if we are being attacked and a strong military that is defense oriented to prevent attacks against this country.
we do not know if these are just people uh, plotting this out of anger, saying things out of anger, and were possibly caught in the hand. They happen to be Muslim, and they happen to be angry, and they said some things out of anger, and the, the it had to be, it happened, uh, someone from the, I guess it's MI5 in England is the, is the Secret Service over there, I'm not sure, but someone was listening in. And so, yeah, it's very true, just like most of the supposed terrorist attacks in the United States. Uh, have been there was a I remember early on there were attacks well there was there was supposedly there were people that were plotting attacks and they were they arrested a lot of people and it was all thrown out of court there was one where they claimed some people were going to attack Disneyland and they used as a uh, piece of evidence uh, that they'd left their video camera on as they were walking around and they said they were trying to pace out and measure you know how big Disneyland was or, or something like that, but it was all it was all thrown out of court. So it but it seems you know if we have such a security problem in this country that we can be taken out by nineteen guys with one dollar box cutters they probably bought at the pick and save on the way to the airport. If we can really be this much damage to us can be done, the the problem is that this is security within this country not that we need to go to other countries that had nothing to do with it and start attacking uh, these other countries. But people still insist that somehow Iraq was involved in terrorism. What do you say to those people? I have nothing to say to those people. <laughs> I, I am so far beyond the point where I'm going to argue with people who who continue to be mired in ignorance. Uh-huh. You say you, you your opinion is just that these people are ignorant. You know, what, what could I possibly do to change their minds? When people get this idea in their head, and this is something they've heard over and over again, and they don't question it, there's no reason to question it. I mean, most people don't spend a whole lot of time contemplating foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. I mean, even from my, my vantage point, I spend a lot of time thinking about the domestic anti-war movement, the specifics of, the, of foreign policy. No, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it. And I'm someone who's very up on what happens from day to day. It's not... There's no particular motivation or reason for people to actually think about these things. That's true. It's just something in the paper that we see every day. It's not very personal to us until, of course, we get our tax bill. Yes. Then it's, it's very, very big, and it will have to go up, and we'll have to be raising taxes to pay for this. And on that note, I'd like to thank you very much for coming out. And if anyone else out there would like any more information about the Libertarian Party's position on foreign policy, that can be found at lp.org. Or, or you can give us a call at 1-800-ELECT-US. We'll send you out a free packet of information. Thanks for watching. And next time you're in line at the post office, the, the post office run by the government, that, and you're waiting a half an hour to, to buy one stamp in line, you can register to vote as a libertarian there at your post office. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Give up.